bringing to you my greatest excitement as I now launch the dream that I've been wanting to bring to you all for such a long time. My first podcast, Slaying the Dragon by Elizabeth Allen from Empowered Alchemy. As we celebrate, commiserate, empathise with compassion, raw, wild and real journeys of our soul struggling to get through this human life on Mother Earth during the times of confluence and change. But you know that you have the tools to navigate your highest soul purpose. You know that you are now bringing towards you self-care as you now have the ascension strategies in place to own and honour your own truth and share your story with others to give them the courage and the strength to know that if you can share one tool with someone else, you are making their day so much easier and so much more rewarding. Welcome, Liz Daniels, all the way. Where do you live? Where are you right now in your studio? Where are you right now? I'm in a town in Norway called Sundefjord. Beautiful. And it's snowing there today. It's snowing there, here today, yes. I'm so excited to have you, Liz, all the way from Norway on my podcast, Slaying the Dragon. So our podcast, my podcast is about sharing beautiful, with beautiful people like yourself that's living your life filled with your passion for your soul purpose, your art or whatever it is, your life, your passion for life, for healing humanity and having a voice. And you have such a beautiful way of doing that. But I want to just have a moment because when our world falls apart, when we slay that dragon, it's not pretty. It's like our call to, to, to answer our calling, the initiation journey, isn't it? And when our world falls apart, it really can get messy. So this podcast, Slaying the Dragon, is really honestly raw, wild and real. It's unedited. There may be some moments in our conversation with you that may trigger other people, and I want people to know that this is a safe place to let you, people know that you've got through this dark night of the soul. It may have been challenging at times, but you you really have uh, traversed that negative journey quite challengingly. Would you like to share your dark night of the soul? When you when, Did you ever have a time in your life where your life was, was happy and perfect? Or, you know, let's. Could, would you like to share who you are? Okay, so this is quite a story. But first of all, thank you so much for inviting me. My I'd actually been doing some affirmations and saying I want to do a podcast. Oh, <laughs> beautiful. You've got to be careful podcast. what you ask for, Liz, don't you? <laughs> so that is very synchronistic and thank you. Oh, darling, look, I was just called into action and it's something I've been wanting to do and saying I'm going to do for a long time and I felt as a life coach, you know, because I am Elizabeth Allen from Empowered Alchemy, a life coach, an artist, a hypnotherapist, and I found that in the last couple of years my voice got, I, I, I felt that I was yeah. mute or I didn't have a voice. I wasn't being seen. I wasn't being heard. And if I did have an opinion about what was happening, I would just be um, banned on social media platforms for up to nine times for nine weeks at a time. And I thought, how does this happen when we share our own truth without judgment of anyone else, how it, we can feel that we're not being heard or we're feeling attacked or ostracised? And it was through that that I reached out to Macau 
and Mikhail Shimoni, who who I actually noticed that you were on the same platform and our paths had crossed before yes. with Shiloh Sophia with the red thread and archetypes yes. and different paintings that we've been. And our voice had similar messages. And here we are from different parts of the world connecting. And I still wear my red thread um, yes. from the yeah, from my journey with the red thread with Shiloh. So our souls really do connect when, and distance and time has no bearing on that, which is just amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And I think when our soul has a passion, uh, it finds a way. And I think through the last couple of years, the challenges that we've been under have also brought us many gifts. And those gifts are meeting you and, and really stepping into another platform and technology has granted us that space and our need to connect with like-minded souls has brought us this beautiful synchronicity and I'm so excited to share this with you tonight. Thank you, thank you. So my story starts, I guess, because it, it does have particular stages in it, as all of it, when you look back in hindsight, mm. you see that without that, this wouldn't have happened. And without that, that wouldn't have happened. Hindsight so is although, a teacher, isn't it? Yeah, although it's, it's a bit sad and it's had a lot of um, negativity in it, it mm. has led me to where I am now, okay. where I do feel that my journey has been... Uh, a rough one, but it speaks of survival and motivation and continuation. So Beautiful. it starts like uh, my mother died very early on in my when I was eight. So, oh, I'm so she sorry to hear that. she went out one night and never came back because she got run over, and so oh, that no. was the first abandonment betrayal. My father couldn't hack it, and in a sense, he abandoned us me and my brother, we um, had a stepmother in the end who my father sort of had more interested in her than in his kids. And um, uh, she was the a typical wicked stepmother from the fairy tales. You know? <laughs> she was always telling me, oh, you're so ugly. No one will ever want to be with you. And I think this... What a really dreadful thing to say. It, it, it was. And it, when you were sort of at that age, you're very susceptible to these ideas. When you're and looking means... at yourself through other people's eyes, you're still developing and growing. And, yeah. and to have yeah. such of a net challenging early formation of your emotional world, your your physical, emotional, mental and spiritual world, you know, what do they say? Show me, show me a child at seven. And your mum died when you were only eight. So it's a very early stages yes. of your development. Yeah. It's just traumatic. Yes. And then there was a bit of sexual abuse in all of this, sort of uh, hmm. sort of from um around about ten ish, you know, oh, with no. the cancer and that stuff. But I think um in our family we had some sexual abuse. I don't really know it. I just feel it. And then this cousin sort of played it out. But consequently, from the age of 13, I was really promiscuous, right? I was looking for love. That's all I was doing. Yeah. I was like all, all of those young girls, yeah. us young girls, who yeah. go out with boys and that and end up having sex. We, we don't yeah. really want sex. We want to be loved. That's and, right. of course, with that sort of attitude, they pick you up, they use you, they drop you. So... This reinforced this whole thing, you know, you're ugly, no yeah. one will want you. And the men that I went and went with, when I look back now, it gives me the horrors mm. to think that I could have had that that idea. To mm. they, they were just really nasty, not very nice people at all. But there you go. And so it goes on and went on. Got into hippie derm, got into a bit of drugs and all of that, experimented psychedelics very glad about that i think those psychedelics might well have altered my perspective later on in life right i wasn't particularly aware of it at the time although i was always a rebel and i think they made me more mm -hmm. of a rebel about what i was doing but it wasn't 
I mean, okay, just to lead up into it. Then I was 22. I had a baby who had a cop death, died oh, no. suddenly overnight. Mm -hmm. My mother died overnight. My mm -hmm. little baby died overnight. Loads of unfinished business there. I never saw a counsellor with my mother. I never saw a counsellor or anyone to deal with with my, my baby, six months old. Mm. But on we go, on we go, we get on with it all. And then when I was, I, I had a bit of a, an introduction into uh, an esoteric um, cult. And um, or uh, uh, and so that introduced me to some of this, th this other world stuff, mm. what was going on. It gave me a whole look at, into Blavatsky and Steiner and healing and the unseen world. So mm -hmm. then I had that little bit that gave me a bit more um, information about life and stuff. Mm. And at 32, um, 32, I met up with a woman called Anne Dixon, who was a forerunner in women's assertiveness and sexuality. Okay. So, and this would have been in the um, uh, early 80s, but well, the 80s, it would have been about that. Um, so, uh, um, yes, 30, 32 I was. And this woman changed my life. I, I belonged to a small group, uh, meeting group, and uh, one evening we were discussing her book and it was called A Woman in Your Own Right. And we, the first page, and I don't, but what it says is we have a choice of what we do. And that blew my mind. I know that sounds really crazy being in my 30s, early 30s, and suddenly realizing that I had a choice. You know, uh, up to that point, I'd been like, blown around on the like a leaf on the wind mm. just sort of all in doing this doing that and thought, bloody hell I've got a choice and that was the beginning of a real big change in my life so I went on a course I went on a couple of courses decided this is what I wanted to do this teaching women how to be assertive was my role in life and sexuality as well it was mm. Anne mm. herself couldn't teach the she wanted to teach women sexuality about how we approached our bodies and all uh, uh, how we dealt with sex mm. but women were so unassertive and unable to look at the sexual side she had to do the assertiveness bit first so mm -hmm. we were learning that and makes sense doesn't it to, it's, to, yeah. you know like everything has stages and i think we need to be prepared um, yeah. Because we're still coming from a place of trauma and, and you don't know what you don't know. You only have your model of your world and that's the only perspective that you can see, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah. Now how did you how did you go through that when you started to learn assertive? Oh, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. It my and then we part of the course was we had to make get on and do teaching while we were on the course. So you mm. couldn't just do the course and then oh well, I don't think I'll do that. You know, we had to do it. That was part of the mm. stipulation. So I was out there teaching women, and this is me, little old Liz Daniels, who sort of dropped out of school, hadn't got an education. And suddenly I was working in um, adult education centres, in libraries. I had a couple of times down at the university. And so my whole world changed. This was the, the beginnings of seeing myself as someone, of losing the feeling of worthlessness. Wow. But these, these layers, they're like onions, you know what? Absolutely. Like. <laughs> and I don't think we really ever stop losing oh, another layer. Don't. Even as we get older, I still think, oh, my God, when does this initiation journey yeah. stop? And I don't think it does. No, I think we are always meeting something new on A hundred percent. It's our sole contract, isn't it? Why did you choose yeah. this pathway? Why did you choose both your mother and your father to get these traumatic lessons of abandonment and low self worth, and being fee you know, to feel that you were just a product to keep other people happy. And why did you choose that? Well, why? 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 I mean, What's there's more why? to come. There's more to come. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> and so life was pretty good. Soldier yeah. on. Let's slay that dragon. <laughs> And that I, I was uh, working in a, a situation that I liked doing proper work. 
I was touching the lives of many women who were very, very grateful. I was looking at uh, all sorts, type, looking at sexuality, running sexually, sexuality classes. We were examining ourselves, drawing our body parts, talking, all of this. Working with anger, I used to run some anger workshops. And this was, um, life was pretty good. And then I met up, I, I, I got involved with a psychopathic man, yeah, what the way one. So I haven't done all, you know, I was on the verge, but I still couldn't recognize, I still had a lot of problems with men and codependency. I've, I've been a I was going to say it sounds because you didn't yeah. receive the deep emotional connection no. from your no. parents, especially your mother, when you were a child growing up. So it leaves no. you vulnerable to get seek love from outside sources. So this narcissistic type of psychopath that you had this experience with, what happened there? How well, we had a that? child. He forced me, in a sense, to have a child. Oh. Um. And this little girl, this now I shall probably cry, right, was the light of my life. She gave me everything. She taught me about love, although I'd had other daughters. And, um, of course, I loved them. But there was something about Rosie. And she died. She was six years old, and she oh. died suddenly overnight. No. And um, this... Oof. This, is this like, was like. Can I just can I just get some tapping happening here? I think for the people watching and for you, just tap on your higher heart and just close your eyes and take three deep breaths in through your nose and just simply just just rest on that space and just say, "I am safe. I am safe. This is a movie that I am the lead actress in. They are all my cast and crew." I am safe. I am safe. This is my story. We all have a story. And when our world falls apart, it's not pretty. It gets messy. But we're here to hear this story, to know that you've got through this and you've not only got through this, you've helped so many other people on your journey. On your journey. I am safe. I hold all of the light I need. Breathe that in. I am light. I am love. I am supported. I am safe. Breathe it in. Have a little mouthful of water. I might have one with you. <laughs> and it's not vodka <laughs> in it. It's just water. <laughs> but you know, Elizabeth, this, um, this death, this death of this beautiful child was such a huge spiritual opening. This was my spiritual opening, okay. right? This was. So she in... brought you a gift. Oh, absolutely. I've written so much about it. And in... have you? It's called The Gift, yeah. I've written poems. I've got masses. Mm -hmm. It was such a journey and grieving because her death too, you see, I hadn't grieved really my mother, hadn't had any counselling, hadn't grieved my baby, had any counselling. Mm -hmm. And Rosie was like the tower crashing. Mm -hmm. And everything came and it had to be dealt with. And there was actually so much joy in that. It sounds really crazy when you're talking of death. Her presence was with me, is still with me, but in not in the but in those early years, she was really, really with me. And in speaking about it, again, it's some I'm I'm someone who does talk about things, you know, and have done. And we talked a lot about death to other people, and it brought a lot of compassion mm. and deeper insights into it and then other people would come and say oh this has happened to me and we'd cry together and I oh yeah so to, it was like having put giving permission to speak mm. about mm. a taboo subject because you know when when I where I lived in this little village in Kent in in England mm. I would walk down the road and people I'd see people in my neighborhood on 
who were coming towards me and they'd cross over the road so they didn't have to see me because they didn't know what to say. They and I didn't think that know happens how... a lot, doesn't it? Even yeah. today, when you know, when people are going through trauma or end of life, they they don't they don't know how to respond or how to support. And and it's awkward for a lot of other people. But really, I think if what would you say to those people? How would you, you know, because you've experienced this three times with other trauma in your life what would you say to other people how would you how do they need to navigate this to help they people? just don't have to be afraid they're afraid of their own feelings aren't they they're afraid of crying themselves yeah of showing themselves in public and i would say it's okay yeah <laughs> let's share it together a little bit See, that's yes. you're so courageous though in, in saying that because you're opening up you know, a massive Pandora's box, really, and and giving permission for people to be able to talk about it. Did that help you when you could give permission to, you know, talk about it? Did that help yes, your grieving did. process? It, it did, but what really helped was some friends from Holland mm. came and uh, rescued me and took me away from the village back to, to where they lived, which was a bit of a... a, a, a squatty it was with alternative people there right lots of alternative people. sounds like you were in the right place yeah and i was able to really let go yeah. of my grief uh, yeah. safely which yeah. meant i would go out sometimes on the field yeah and throw myself on the ground beat the ground good. Scream. Yeah, good. And I could do that as much as I wanted yeah. without being judged or thought yeah. mad. Yeah. And they all looked after me, sort yeah. of, uh, and were, you know, knew what I was going through. Yeah. And that was, that was really, really helpful. And yeah. if there's anything to say to anybody who has lost, well, not necessarily a child, but anybody important in their life. You've got to grieve. You've got to speak it out. You don't get over it in three months. No. Oh, aren't no. you over that yet? Aren't you over it yet? You don't get over it. No. It stays with you. It's like a heavy big stone in your stomach that just yeah. gets lighter. Mm. <laughs> and it might not come back um, sort of in that same, in the same way as it did, did at the very beginning, but it's still there. Mm. But grieving, be it, grieving properly, yeah is essential and we're not taught that we're not allowed it it's shut off keep it sort of um and certainly not this wild i mean i was a wild woman i was like i connected to mother earth then in those times yeah beating and scouting and, and shouting and rolling around and not sort of uh and that's so needed to come out yeah that's so needed to come out so um and you know, still now, sometimes it's not like that. But there'll be a time when I'll think of oh, my little Rosie in one way or another, and I'll cry. And those tears are the most wonderful tears hmm. that one could ever have. They just come and they <laughs> and they bring a sort of a. <laughs> it sounds a bit That's <laughs> crazy, but yeah. it, it just brings something really. Wonderful, wonderful. And you don't and want people to shut your tears down or or to no. touch you or to, because even if someone gives you a hug or touches you, it's like that anchors that feeling like they're trying to help you, and which actually inadvertently shuts your emotions down, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah, what yeah, would you yeah. say to those people if you're triggered into this emotion? Because you're safe in this emotion, but other people don't, they're, they're helpless, aren't they? What, how would you help people in that situation? Um, how do they, how do you help people help you or help, help the person going through this? What do um, they need to do? You see, it hasn't actually happened very much when people okay. have, have come and hugged me and stuff. And I think most of the people that I've known, let me, come to an end of it and then yourself then come to a, a, a hug which is also and that's the perfect way to do it yes yeah, yeah good yeah. 
yeah, good. And I don't know that I would actually say to someone, oh, don't touch me, if they did that, because that's what it... And maybe I'd talk about it afterwards, but yeah. in the moment, I wouldn't... Um, uh, and you see, for me, it was so easy to be able to let go once I got into it. Yeah. yeah but, um, you know, in writing, writing was really good. I, I wrote ever such a lot about it all, ever such a lot. And when you so, were writing, was it a story, journaling, poetry? What were you writing? Journaling, journaling poetry, yeah. that sort of thing, yeah. And I did, I must admit, I had at that time access in uh, to some uh, medical marijuana. And this was exceedingly helpful. Good. Really, really helpful. How was that so, helpful for you at that time? Then it took me enabled me to get a bigger perspective of the situation. Wow. Instead of that and um, uh, it's sort of like that, that, that. Yes, it took, took me to a higher place to look yeah. down and see this is how it is. And you can, you've got the, the possibility. In fact, marijuana has actually been in and out of my, I use it as a medicine. Use it as okay. a medicine. Yeah. Yeah. In when I'm really stuck at times and I'm yeah. unable to, uh, when I fall into old programming, mm -hmm. which is the killer, the old mm -hmm. programming, as you That's well right. know. <laughs> All too well. But we still get the initiation journey. We still get the challenges. You know, when we think we're done, like you said, there's more layers yeah. or more challenges. And, you know, we have to learn to navigate our way through that and have our doona day or have our quiet time. How do you cope when you're sort of going through that time and needing to just nurture you and bring yourself back into your own self-care? What do you do in that space? Then I paint. Yeah, I paint. I'm creative. I mean, I've had uh, creation, uh, creativity um, has been my friend for a long time. But painting, uh, this you see, after Rosie died, then um, I started making art. I was sort of compelled, and it was very sweet, childish art, and it was very much to do with Rosie and going up into heaven sort of art, you know, or, or, or that sort of moving on into a, a lighter space. Mm. And then I, I, what I sent you, which you never got, was some of this work that I was doing. And I had access to this medium, and it was called sticky back plastic, plastic vinyl adhesive. Mm -hmm. So it comes in sheets. Well, it came in huge rolls like yeah. this, and I... You got it from the factory because uh, I was doing community arts and I had access to a lot of this. And this was brilliant for working through this these really tricky times, really brilliant. How and so? How did you use it? What did you do with it? Well, I made pictures. It's a shame because I sent some to you. That's okay. <laughs> we, will, we will get them and we will share them on our page just but because it, this is a... a... Yeah, the, it was really huge, these old rolls, right? Yeah. And then I'd get them and I'd cut them up into teeny weeny little pieces like this, you know, really small pieces. Wow. So this yeah. Whole process of cutting, yeah. snipping, peeling off, sticking. And so when in the the difficulties would come, then it was very easy and not messy. Then I would start doing some sticky back plastic. I've got hundreds of bits, just making patterns with it. And it would, um, I'd start off and I'd be at it for maybe three hours and not, to, and that, that suicidal thought that I might have had at the beginning was gone totally. And it had gone, it got into what is called now the flow state. Yeah, I yeah I was in a. I didn't know that that's what it was. I was just doing it. Yeah, and this flow state was very uh, conducive to. Um, well, it was a little bit of mindless, <laughs> mindless. mindfulness. 
Mindless, I think we need mindlessness to be actively be mindfulness, don't we? Actually, we need to just get out of our head. I think that that's that's perfect. I think you chose the right word. Yeah, and um, that was very valuable, yeah. and uh, and that sort of uh, that was the beginning of the paintings, and then one progresses onwards, and then it's coming to meet to meet Flora. I got into collage a bit before things. I was very early on into oh, okay. Yes. Oh, yes. so yeah. that's interesting. We really are entwined. I think. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Step, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. We need to yeah. all meet one day. Wouldn't that be great? Right? Yeah, wouldn't that be yeah. great? <laughs> Wild women. Yes. Yeah, so these all writing when when uh, uh, not so much these days because I'm. As one gets older, I mean, at that point, I would have been 50, in my, in my uh, 50s. Mm. And uh, I was in a very different mindset than being in my late 60s and now 70s. Something wow. That's just amazing. And look at how amazing you look. You look, you look so <laughs> ageless and beautiful. Oh, thank you. What's your <laughs> secret? Is it living in Norway and not being in the sun like I am? No. I think it's having a good Zoom camera. <laughs> God love you. Oh, I think that's perfect. I love that. Yeah. So tell me about the painting that's behind you on the easel. Right. You can't see it in its best colours, unfortunately. That's okay. Yeah, we can. It's actually beautiful. It has some gold. It looks like Nicolazzo gold. I mean, let me just... Uh, ah, that's better. It's much lighter than what it first saw. Okay. Saw. Beautiful. Look at that. So that is that is a commission for someone okay. who was wanting to. Uh, uh, there's a lot of work gone into that, lots and lots of layers, and um, it's to do with cosmic evolution. Cosmic evolution, yeah. Cosmic, right. and, and it looks cosmic. It looks, you know, out there, and it looks, yeah. So, go on, explain to people watching. Um, this that have no idea about what you're talking about. What's cosmic evolution? Well, she particularly asked, she'd seen some of my work and she said, I want you to make one that uh, represents something of how I feel. So underneath this, there are lots of different layers and lots of words written on which she wanted, which she yeah. felt which was what she was involved with. Beautiful. Buddha, Christ. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Shiva, um, transformation, love, courage, mm. loads of different things. Mm. So they're all underneath there, painted over and integrated in. Mm. Mm. And it's cosmic evolution is to expansion, the growth of the human being into something. It's the path of initiation in a sense, isn't it? it or or one, like it. Yeah, one call to action. Recognizing yeah. that dark night of the soul and and yeah. and feeling like you can't do this for one second longer, and how yeah. you get out of that is from your own tools and resources, and your journey has been phenomenal. So keep going, keep sharing your story. It does seem, as I look back, that I have undergone quite a few mm. blows. That um, any one blow would yeah. knock someone off like i could have turned into how come it didn't knock you over how, you know what, I what don't know. this resilience in me i suppose to bounce back and that must just be something that i'm born with because <laughs> you know, i don't did do you that. have a, a, a spirituality and a sense of faith or hope a connection to a higher source when you were going through this even as a child did you know did when when did you connect to a greater universal life force energy i i suppose when i was getting there i was getting there just before rosie passed on in oh no i've been looking i've been no that's not true i've dabbled i've dabbled in and out of so many different things yeah throughout yeah. my life i'm not a follower of any one thing yeah which sometimes can be a really disadvantage because you say oh god <laughs> you know there's oh. so there's nothing that but 
I'm looking at different aspects of spirituality, religion, all the time, mm. all the time, mm. and um, of Christ, Christ consciousness, yeah. yeah, and sacred feminine, and <laughs> these ones that would probably be most in my life right now in this u universal consciousness like mm. um you've got that prayer the the our father prayer and i've i've not been a very strong one towards god i've always liked jesus yes mm. you are mm. i've always had a connection but god somehow i didn't get a good a good feeling about god <laughs> we we did a lot of Bible stuff as kids. Nowadays, you just don't touch this at school, but at home. With the trauma in the... that you had, do you think that you question God as a result of your losing your mum at such a young age and, and you know, the subsequent, you know, like Maybe. end Maybe. of life from your baby and your little girl, Rosie? Maybe, but not consciously, not no. consciously. It's something about patriarchal and... The cruelness of this God in the Bible, I think, mm. the cruelness. And one of my tenets is kindness, right, yeah. is kindness. Well, and I've I always that... struggled with, you know, how can people say that there's a fear of God when if if God is love, how can you be frightened of God? And I yes. see God, I see God as a universal life force energy or the light of the infinite sun, and it's all encompassing, and it's our it's our energy field, isn't it? And and our vibration goes out, and we can feel the connection of other people, can't we? You know, where when we're connected, we can feel that higher energy field and we know when there's a field of energy that's either negative or positive don't we we just we can feel that psychic attack almost when people are projecting negative energies onto us or when they're sending us love yes. and when you were going through that trauma and you were going through your own dark night of your soul and then people in your village were not knowing how to handle that you wouldn't have, were you aware of the energies that they were projecting onto you? How did that make you feel? I would have had some, uh, some, I, I'm very thankful for my, my training in the assertiveness because that looks at feelings. Really, I've got quite a good understanding of feelings Fantastic. from that, which yeah. has stayed with me, body language, um, all of that was, was a really, great foundation on yeah. which to build everything else well no. fantastic so, but if i can just go back to that one like the saying the lord's prayer yes and sorry. So that, that, that that never really uh I, always something didn't quite feel right with it and then yeah. in looking into aramaic the the wording of it uh, and what it is like there's so many different translations one can get now. Yeah. So instead of saying our father, there is um, a great creator, cosmic birther, source of all being. So it's I neither like male nor female. And that fits yeah. much better with me. Can you go yeah. back to the one before that? Um, yeah, can you say that again just one more time for people who you know are so, listening to this? Oh great creator. Mm. Cosmic Bertha, source of all being. I like that. I really like that. Source of all beings. I really like that. I'm going to write that down. That's beautiful. Cosmic creator. I really like that. I can that. send you the I'll send you the little the translation of it. Right? I think that so would be beautiful like that. because we might share that at the bottom of the podcast it's, for people watching the lovely. podcast. I think that would be beautiful. Thank you for that, Liz. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So that's where I am now in this universal energy. I mean, there's still so many contradictions and things mm. going on. But, and and this is where it's vital that one stays on one's own path. And how do you do that for people watching this? How do you stay on your own path when there's so much chaos and confusion and fear? And I think there's more fear. In the last few years, we seem to have an overload of fear. Well, the first thing is recognizing when I'm stepping off it. So having awareness. Yep, good. Having awareness. Yeah. Uh, that good. I'm not 
feeling in my power. Yeah. And that will show itself through maybe being a bit bitchy, through maybe a bit of bitterness, yeah. through... Um, uh, nah, 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 nah. So, so, so a we can all do of... that, but you're having awareness now and you go, oh, oh, and you have your aha moment. Yes. Yeah. Good. And so then, all right, I've got to get my, pull myself yeah. out of this. So, first thing I try and do is find someone to talk to about yeah. it. Right. Do that, friends. We I've all need some... that. Yeah. Talking about it. Then it might need a little kickstart into doing something that I know works, like, um, with uh, affirmations, with looking over what I'm wanting, where am I wanting to go, um, what can I do? Um, um, but the most important thing is being aware of my thoughts and stopping them when they get into the negative ones. And how do and you that, do that? What's your um, how do, well, I see that and then I do a little bit of self-talk some, I t talk a lot to myself. And that's good. You get the right answers that way. <laughs> Sometimes I shout. And that's good. Yeah. It's good to be angry and, and get it out yeah. of your system. And uh, focus meditation, a little bit of more meditation mm. on it, on what I'm so is that like a reflection rather than shutting it down? Yes. You're not doing a spiritual oh. bypass at all, are you? No, no, no. We've got no. to go into it to get out of it. You, yeah, good. <laughs> well, a spiritual bypass doesn't help. You can't pretend that it's not happening and just sweep it under no. the mat. You, you know, nobody's happy all of the time. We're sometimes no. happy and we're sometimes sad or we're sometimes joyful and we're sometimes really angry. And this process of allowing ourselves to be both yin and yang or light and dark, you know, we need to be accepting of ourselves in our holistic self 100%, don't we? We, you know, we, we're not always happy all of the time, you know, and we're not, spiritual people need to know, well, we're, everyone needs to know that, you know, spiritual people actually do their own work. Yes. Yes. You know, it's not all happy and a bed of roses. It's not violets and roses all of the time. There's, no, there's no. challenges, constant challenges, isn't there? Absolutely, it? absolutely. And that initiation, and I, it's like I see it as a test and I go, oh, I've been tested today. Whoops. Yeah, yes. Yes, and seeing the dark shadows and the yes. dark. Yeah, all, all these negative things do have entities. They do. Yeah, uh, and understanding them and seeing where they're coming in is and also... that's the dragon, uh, isn't it? So you, how do you make friends with that or make peace with that? Recognising. Good, that there is again, this, awareness. Yeah. 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 Sometimes uh, I have to just shut the dragon, send him on his way. Or get on him and ride him. <laughs> well, <I'm... laughs> is that when you speak into your good. power, your divine feminine, and say, yeah. right, you know what? It's just something like that, although I wouldn't have consciously put, I get on my dragon and ride, but that would be the uh, uh, a similar metaphor for dealing yeah. with it, yes. yeah. uh, uh, going into it, getting on it and moving through it. It's and like so facing the fear, isn't it, and doing it anyway. Yes. Yes. Mm. yes. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of talk about shadow work and has been yeah, for some very time. Much so. And I realise I've been doing shadow work for years. Your whole yeah, life, not... by the sound of things. <laughs> you were born in the shadow. We're and this is what I, I feel that this is one of my jobs. Yeah. I've really got to deal with Maybe this that's shit. your why. Maybe that's why you chose your mum and your dad <laughs> and your soul contract to be where you are today. Look at the amount of people that you've helped journey yes. through really brutal traumatic events in their life and how you've brought healing and peace and through your own creativity yeah yes you wouldn't be who you are today if you hadn't gone through that journey no. <sighs> and then i had i've had a, a, another rather big blow recently or in in 2000 you see then i i in a long time uh, uh when i was 40 i'd hitchhiked uh, to Prague uh, and I met a man there, a Norwegian man, and we had a, a very nice time. 
<laughs> and he wanted me to come and move to Norway and it was just not possible. And that was when we were both 40. And then later on in life, it turned out that we could do this. Uh, that, 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 oh, he, uh, that, that he, um, he's a, he, uh, a healer and an acupuncturist. And I had a thyroid problem and I got in touch with him. So we met after 20 years and then something was rekindled. And then I upped from England to come to Norway. And this was um, a very big thing for me. And I trusted my partner. I knew that this man would not let me down, that this man was going to be my true, not like the others. <laughs> but when you haven't dealt with things, you have to deal with them. They come up. Well, like sure. that. Anyway, yeah, exactly. I discover. That's I discover. 100%. To 2019 that he's been having a very silly affair with someone for a few yeah I won't don't I won't go too much into that the fact the point was that he had betrayed me and this is my path right betrayal throughout my life it's been betrayal from or abandonment mother. betrayal and abandonment yeah. yeah but I think betrayal because the trust that I had um, you know, the trust in my mother when she never came back and abandoned me, right? Mm -hmm. And my father, you have the trust there. And I, one didn't, wouldn't, I trusted that Rosie would be with me for mm -hmm. the, to the end of, you know, that I'd die before her sort of That's thing. Right. And uh, I've had so many betrayals with men, unbelievable. But this one, I thought I'd found the right one, but it seemed that it was not to be. And so, I was devastated, Elizabeth. Absolutely, de really devastated. Really, really, I'm so really. So sorry to hear all of this. That's terrible. That's um, but this has been my next work to work upon. Mm -hmm. the, uh, and I do believe in karma, mm -hmm. and that things happen, and that we're on this path, and that I've chosen this path, and this has happened. And whereas I do not condone what he did he did it both of us have grown so much since then mm -hmm. because it had to be talked about i was so angry with him yeah. so angry never yeah. been angry like that with any of these other silly men and at last i had a chance to get angry with him yeah, for what he'd done to me yeah and yeah. um and how did that uh, how did you how did you express your anger with him um, well, <laughs> at the beginning, I was a little violent, <laughs> but that that didn't uh, last um, too long. I mean, but I, I think it, that had to happen. I and I, also I had to control myself as well mm. in 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 doing that. But it was that little girl that was coming out that had been yeah. betrayed yeah. and abandoned. So the little eight year old's wounds were actually coming back. And and you, ha I always believe that when we go through trauma, unless it's properly healed, we return back to the first root cause of when we first experienced the trauma. Yeah. So the little child needed that the beautiful support and deep emotional connection, and you weren't getting that. You were getting more betrayal and more abandonment. So it was more fuel to the fire. Yes, and the th with him, I mean, what one thing for certain, I knew that throughout all that time that he loved me. There was yeah. no doubt of that. Okay. There was no doubt of that. So how did you and, get through that period of time? Well, that took a lot of talking, mm -hmm. and I had to be very bold with that because, of course, he didn't really want to talk about it. Because and he didn't he want to listen, listen. <laughs> or own it. He had his own <laughs> stuff. To do. I mean, he had to own it, and he yeah. has owned it. Yeah. And that was very good. But it was. it's not easy. Um, it wasn't easy for him to mm. talk mm. and I forced him good and I still do at times because it, I get triggered by certain things yeah. and up it comes and I have to talk about it and that's a good I thing have, that's healthy yeah I have in fact Elizabeth this happened in 2019 mm. and just recently I've been um getting some some of this stuff is rising again in me mm. in me right mm. and so I'm going to 
go I've made an appointment with my, my therapist actually yes. to do to do another layer on betrayal yes. yes doesn't doesn't go away these things they don't just get healed no. they do get healed we but... do have to remove and, and bring healing to the first root cause of when it happened yeah 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 so um i can help you with that if you need some help at some point okay thank you yeah, i'd be thank happy you. to help you with that we have zoom yeah <laughs> the world is a small place now yes so yes. how do you now so you didn't split up you didn't break up this relationship didn't end no it didn't end and it was funny because I as I said I was very vocal about it I yes. was not I didn't stay quiet and keep it all hidden in good. shame good I was very and let people know and talked about it on Facebook in some of my groups and stuff and good. wasn't um uh, and that that was really important for me. Yeah. That, whole, yeah. that that was my part of it to not feel shame. Yeah, good about it. Well, it wasn't. He had a, no. He had a whole another thing. He needed to go through what he went through yeah. for his journey, and that's and my journey was to deal with this, um, the betrayal, the shameful act, uh, act of betrayal. Yeah, and so I did. Um, and we bought various books on um, on what. Oh, that's what I was going to say. That when I said when I let people know, so many women said to me, "That's it. Oh, just drop him, chuck him away, take his money, and run," sort of thing. And you know that would be. Then I'd meet it again. Then I'd meet it again. When you will, a hundred percent. That's the and that's the only guarantee, isn't it? That we, if we don't deal with this and we run away, we take ourselves with us, and the situation will happen again. And it's like that hamster on a wheel, isn't it? Groundhog. Yeah, yeah. So we work through it. Good. And both of us have uh, grown, grown Fantastic. enormously. Yeah, from it. Mm. Yeah, but it still pops up, and I still talk about it. And I know when I bring it up, he doesn't like it at all. But he has to just—that's, you know, that's how it is. That's right. That's how it is. It sounds like it's a twin flame relationship when the way you're speaking like that—that that two people, you know, and especially from your awareness of when you were a little girl and not having that deep emotional connection. My apologies. <laughs> For Oscar in the background, thank you, Oscar. God love him, bless him. Um, leave it, Oscar. Okay. Um, yeah, we can. We can't control the world outside of us, can we? Isn't that perfect timing? You know that um, energies are felt, and you know he's inside. Oscar's inside, and there's something outside that's getting his attention, and he's stepping into being the protector, and with that big <laughs> voice, he has such a big voice. So, you know, anyway, um, it sounds to me like you've definitely healed the the codependency. You don't need someone else to make you happy. So you stepped into the power of the divine sacred woman and owned your emotions communicated how it made you feel which is high intelligence and high emotional intelligence for you to be able to have that hold your own space and hold space for him to allow him to become the divine masculine so you forced him to do his own work <coughs> he may have come kicking and screaming and he still may struggle with it but the two have become you know, this amazing energy where you're now both holding your own flame. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Does that I mean, this with thing, you? Yes, <coughs> yes, yes, yes. No, I feel it very, And I think very when people do, when people become the divine sacred and the divine, you know, masculine and feminine or the twin flame, they, when they come together and they really do their own work, they hold each other accountable for what's happening. And then you do come together to actually um, bring healing to humanity. Have you and your partner actually talked about doing something together to bring healing to humanity? I don't think we will be doing it together. He's doing his own stuff 
in which is very different. I mean, I'm not really on totally on his path. I'm on this. Yet we join together. Yeah. We join together. I would like actually that would be one of my what I to do something where we do talk about this. It, it may come up because there's no coincidence. Yeah. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe yeah. in divine action and there's a synchronicity in in this story. And I do feel really strongly that, yeah, you and the divine, sacred, feminine and masculine holding your own light, there may be an opportunity somewhere sometime for you to both be able to come and bring healing to humanity together. So... I guess we'll watch this space, and if that happens, <laughs> I would love to have you back for another chat and maybe your partner to share the journey of this next chapter of your movie. That would be wild. That's definitely slaying the dragon, isn't it? Yes. Yes, I wonder. That would be very... We do have some plans. We have actually got a very nice place now where we can do some meetings and have people about so that it it could be a possibility and um it wouldn't be him who brought it up though it wouldn't be him who would suggest it that's just to let, let you know where the pathway lies <laughs> <laughs> it'll be you definitely yeah, <laughs> yeah. you will be dry, riding the dragon yeah, yeah. And it's funny about this codependency, you know, because I knew I was codependent really from quite early on. Once I started the assertiveness stuff, yeah. then we were doing all this yeah. different uh, counselling stuff that came into it and codependency came into my reality. And I, I realised I was and I thought I'd done it, mm. but I, I wasn't. I was codependent right up till the age of 50. And then on my 50th birthday, I was with this really silly man and I thought this has got to stop so I finished it that's it we're, uh, we're finished yeah and then I, for seven years I was totally celibate and uh which for me in how I've been going was it was good it was a good a good move to make and be willful will this is you, something you, that, you then know what energies are yours and what aren't yours don't you yes. when you do that yes. yeah Yes, and that was uh, an exceedingly important part of mm. my life to actually say no. And then I was looking at men, but looking at them to see what I liked in them and what I didn't like and how they were. So then I learned about what it was that I wanted. And then after that, I met my partner. Okay, so, fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Yes. Wow, that's that's actually great. Yeah. So what would you suggest? How did you look at what you were doing? Was that the negative and the positive qualities and the values? Or? Yeah, yeah, just seeing what did I want? Well, I wanted someone who was strong enough to to hold me, I mean, yeah. to take me as yeah. with my As wife. you are and not to yeah. shrink you or yeah. to get you to get yeah. bigger. Or, yeah, exactly as you and are. I wanted someone who had a good spiritual knowledge, who was involved in... Um, uh, a different uh, world view yeah. yeah and um yeah I, someone to look after me i did i wanted that i wanted to, to to look up it was and also i didn't want alcohol or drugs involved with him yeah. yes which had often been the men that I got associated with, yeah, right? Yeah. Particularly alcohol. Yeah. Got a lot of alcohol was in my life, yeah. Mm. So that was good to, um, and that it, 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 neither of those things he was interested in. Mm. Mm. Cool. And so that was very interesting for me to be in a relationship where there wasn't drugs and alcohol involved. Yeah. 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 Very, um, very good. So where to from here? What's your journey forward? Well, I'm just at the moment in a state of looking at that again. <laughs> and, so, and no it? surprise. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Michael had put out uh, um, a lovely 
some podcasts with Grandmother Three Crow. Yes, I, I was watching that. them. They're beautiful, aren't they? Yeah. And I thought, you know, a lot of the women I know are Grandmother Three Crow. Yes. You know, uh, you know um, um, we, we have so much in us that we perhaps don't, because no one has said you are this or you are that, that we don't actually claim it for our own. And yeah. I feel that my journey is a bit of claiming what I've got. I still don't see myself. I can feel myself being... breathing that in. I really like the power of what you just said. I want you to say that again and really own that so that everybody watching can feel the power of what you've just said. So step into your powerful goddess energies and can you say that again? Do that, I'm uh, claiming my own. Yes. yes. Yeah, I felt and, uh, power with that. So it's very much to do with claiming my own power or recognising what I've got, mm -hmm. what I've got to give. And even if nobody sees me, which is quite likely in today's world, to know that all the work that I'm doing is actually going out into the world on some level and making a difference. I love working with you, darling, and being on this podcast together. And I'm, and everything that you've just said has now gone out into the world and everything is being recognised. You are being seen, you are being heard, and you are so being felt by probably billions of people right now as when this goes live and, you know, it's um, in the next few weeks when the time is right. It's amazing that, you, that I do believe that the right people see it at the right time and it will be shared on YouTube and people will connect with you. If there's one thing that you could leave us with, you know, as we're now owning our own power and, and being the grandmother, I think that's, you know, being the crone, it used to be such a nightmare of a thought to think that we would ever get old and wrinkly and, you know, thinning hair and losing teeth and stress and, and yeah. the trauma and the scars of our life and the limp that we walk with, you know. And, um, you know, and I think when I walk with my limp, I recognise, well, it has a story and we all have a story. We all have trauma. We all have a movie. Our life is a movie and we are the lead actress in our movie and you have had the cast and crew. If you were to have one lead actress to play the role of Liz Daniels in your movie, who would you choose to be the lead actress in oh, your movie? Gosh. gosh. That's putting it on the spot, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I can't even think of anyone. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> who, who? Maybe I'll answer that and let me. Who would be... I know There's who something. I can see. Who would you say? I'd probably choose Meryl Streep. All right, yeah. Um, because she just seems to have this amazing energy that takes on the role of, you know, people in all walks of life so amazingly. And you've walked so many incredible paths that you need somebody who's malleable in their way to be able to portray so many different aspects of you. Yes. But it would be interesting to see, you know, as you think about that yourself and you allow this person to come forward in you because I do believe that we, um, who's your favourite superstar or superhero? Who, who do you really admire? Past, present, or future, fictional or non-fictional. Do you know? I this is. Um, well, I really admire this. My my teacher Anne Dixon. I okay. that's I really admire her. Yeah, yeah. And I, what are the qualities that Anne Dixon has that you really admire about her? That she had a desire to change the way of the woman a, a woman's. Um, of who of how women felt about themselves and her desire was very authentic and powerful and daring 
boldness, boldness. Anyone who's bold, bold is part of, you've got to be bold, you can't, for me, boldness is important, yeah. yeah. Is there any other qualities that you really admire about Anne Dixon? Um, she was outright. What does that mean specifically for you? She would say what she felt and not and not uh, juice it up. I like that. Good. Uh, yeah. We need Thanks. will. We've got to have will. This is the thing that when you say, how did you do it, Liz? And I guess there was a will to just go forward, will. And when I'm not in my power, I see my will is missing. That's that's a very important I mean, that's, part. But that's really powerful, Liz. How do you get your will back when you notice you've got awareness and you notice that your will is missing? How do you get your will back? How do you reconnect with your will? I have to push myself. I have to do perhaps things that... And how do you um, do that? Then that comes from I decide. I just decide. Okay, I'm going to do this, and then I'll stop doing something and do it. But I have to really decide. Okay. What happens just before you decide? That what happens before? I, well, that's when it gets to a point where um, it all feels pointless and useless. And where am I going? What am I doing? Oh, oh, that, and then it's. Stop this. I like that. I really like that. You can see there's something switched in you that goes right, I'm up against it, I'm doing it and I'm doing it now and I'm doing it my way. And the will steps in to force you to take action, not just any action, but it's mad, passionate, intentional, focused action. How does that make you feel when you get that feeling of will? Then things begin to lift. The the darkness lifts, and it's simple. You know, it's like going like that. Really, yeah. It's as simple as doing that. Turning it and over. Then, it's the flip yeah. side. And making there might be numerous things that I could have been doing via internet, or, or I might try and organise a workshop. Might right. do something like that. And what that does that bring one. towards you when you start to when you when your wheel steps in? And you start to design design a workshop. What does that bring towards you then? How does that make then you feel? I, I see it in a different light, and I feel worth uh, uh, worthy, and I feel that I have something to offer that I'm um, that people will enjoy this, and that I'm creating a space for it. Something like that. Yeah, I love that. So it gives you then a sense of passion and you're then moving forward, aren't you? You're not getting yeah, away from what you don't want. You're no longer stuck. You you have this will to and you're, it creates a momentum, doesn't it, so that you yes. get an energy of high motivation and excitement and passion. What does that bring towards you when those wheels are moving forward rapidly? Well, it changes from being powerless to being powerful. Perfect. I love that. That's beautiful. Can I close, get you to close your eyes? Yeah. Do you give me permission to access your unconscious mind and for you to be aware yeah. of it consciously? <laughs> I have to ask permission. This is not planned. This is not premeditated. I haven't decided. I didn't plan this for everyone watching, but I want you to now just take three deep breaths in through your nose as you breathe in deeper and deeper and deeper. And just allow your eyes to look up to the sky with your eyelids gently closed over the top. That's it, like you're looking to the inside of your forehead. And I want you to breathe in that passion, the desire to change the way women feel about themselves. Breathe that in. And I want you to get that feeling bigger and bigger, the desire to change the way women feel about themselves. Expand that feeling in your heart, in your physical, emotional, mental and spiritual body. Breathe in your authenticity, how authentic you are. 
how powerful you are, how daring and bold. You are bold. You are strong. You are bold. You are so bold beyond measure. You take mad passionate action. When you get going, you get going. You love your boldness. You are outright. You say what you feel without juicing it up. You have that realness. Your authenticity shines through with daring boldness. We have we have to now just have that will to move forward. And as you breathe in your own will, that resilience and that will that you have, and I want you to now see that you have all of the qualities of Anne Dixon, for you cannot recognise the qualities in another person if you don't have those qualities yourself. Breathe those qualities into every cell and expand them in your own universal cosmic life force for you are the cosmic adventurer. You are daring, you are bold. And as you breathe that in, I want you to give yourself a beautiful, big, heartfelt hug. Cross your left hand over your right shoulder and your right hand over your left shoulder. Really hold that little baby that little baby Liz, hold, hold her, hug her, strap her on to the front of your heart or to the back of your shoulders so that you are holding that little baby Liz. Don't ever let it go and simply say, hello, Liz. And you can even say it out loud if you like. Hello, Liz. I love you, Liz. I love you, Liz. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I love you. And just keep saying your own first name. I love you. I love you. Thank Please. you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Liz, forgive me. Please forgive me. I love you. I really love you. I'm so proud of you. You're so I bold. love you. You're so daring. You're so outright. So You're authentic. So you bold. just breathe it in <laughs> and hug her and hold her and never, ever, ever let her go. I love you. I love you. For be loving me. And just lock it in, really lock it in. Lock that feeling in to every cell of your cellular biology for the thoughts that you feel change your actions and it changes your cellular biology. Just breathe it in and just love you for being you, your story, your movie, and the way you have been so resilient through your life and empowering so many women that have had trauma to bring healing and hope and through your creativity and your beautiful mind and heart and soul, I thank you. Thank you for being you. Well, thank you, Elizabeth. And when you're ready, just float down into now and come back into the room, into this million podcast channel <laughs> and just say, like, thank you. That wasn't planned, but I just felt that I really wanted you to come home to you and help everybody else in, that's been watching this with the trauma that you've been through to know that there is that amazing you know, our initiation, our why, why we choose our movie, why we choose our story. We have no idea why. I don't have the answers. But talking to you today has definitely filled my heart with my why to help people realise that if there's just one person out there today that can help others make a difference in their life, I have gratitude, Liz Daniels, for all that you are and all that you do and for helping anyone, just one person today. That's that's my purpose and my sole passion. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Is there Elizabeth. anything you want to say to wrap up, to, to, to say anything for anyone watching here today? I think that we all have our maybe... There are many people who have had things like me go on, but they keep it to themselves. Yeah. And uh, one of the most powerful things we can do with our stories is share it. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. And I think, you know, I didn't realise the power of what 
my call to action was, but in reaching out with beautiful people like you, I had no idea what story you were going to share today. And I, I, I congratulate you and honor you for your courage to be able to share so many traumatic stories and give hope to the people out there that have been going through their dark night of the soul that where there's a will, there's a way. If people can reach out to you in any way whatsoever, if they need help, how would you like them to contact you? It would be great if they could leave, if they have any questions, to maybe even write the questions at the bottom of our YouTube channel so that that way it can stay in one link for people to follow and lead. And I think that will become like that snowball that, you know, gets bigger as it rolls down the mountain, you know. How would you like them to, and, and we'll actually attach your contact details and Facebook or, you know, website so that if people want to book through workshops or, you know, contact you, that they, they, we will attach the contact details for you. Yes. So I've sent all that to you. That's yeah. okay. We, you know, if I haven't received it, we will find we, there, we, well, where there's a will, there's a way. I will never take no for an answer. If anyone that knows me, I will not take no for an answer. We will get this together and um, yeah. it will happen. So thank you, gorgeous girl. I really value and honour our conversation, our chat and your courage for sharing your journey with thank us. You. All right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, it's my pleasure. I can't wait to get your partner on to have a chat with how you're sharing the <laughs> saving the world together. That'll be interesting. Is that part the next channel, the next chapter? Watch this space. <laughs> thank you, Liz. <laughs> thank you, Elizabeth. My pleasure, darling girl. Yeah, and thank you for your work in doing this and allowing people like me to just have a voice to um, to share and maybe, like you say, it touches others. Yeah. And that's great. That's great. Thank you for this hope and connection. And we feel that we're not alone and we're not doing it on our own. And and I think through creativity, I know that my art and, you know, it's how I've met you through the trauma of my life, I suppose, has really built up my art and the way I express myself through art to bring healing to me, through me and from me. And I think that's how we've met as well on our art journeys. And we don't need to connect in a small place, you know, in our own backyard, so to speak. You know, when we're global, you know, you in Norway and, you know, you know, and um, Mikhail in Israel and Flora in America and Shiloh in America. The world is getting smaller every day and it's beautiful to to have so many amazing people sharing such such strong wisdom. Yeah. All doing our own work. I feel like I'm a work in progress. I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> See you, gorgeous. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank Talk you. To you soon. See you. Bye-bye. I am so honoured to walk beside you as we support each other in connection and collaboration in our community.